Hey you guys, today I'm going to teach you guys how to make an orange cardamom pina colada. So what we will need is one pint or two cups of half and half, one tablespoon of honey, one gram or a half teaspoon of cardamom, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, six grams or one and three fourths teaspoon of gelatin, one vanilla pod, a quarter cup or 54 grams of sugar, and a quarter cup of orange juice. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to bloom our gelatin. And to bloom our gelatin in this recipe, what we want to do is in our quarter cup of orange juice, we want to slowly sprinkle our gelatin on top while kind of moving the orange juice around. So in my sauce pot, I have my sugar, my salt, my cardamom, and my honey. And then what you want to do is you want to add your half and half. And then you want to split your vanilla bean in half lengthwise. What this does is open up the pod so you get all the delicious seeds. And then you want to scrape the seeds out and place them into your milk, or I'm sorry, your half and half. And then along with the seeds, you also want to add the pod because the pod has an enormous amount of flavor in it too. And then you want to place this over medium heat to scald the half and half. So while our half and half is heating up, what we want to do is we can start on our candied hibiscus leaves. And what I have is one gram of hibiscus leaves, 18 grams or one tablespoon of just granulated sugar, and four tablespoons or 54 grams of water. And all we want to do is place all these in a sauce pot and bring them to a boil. So now that we have our hibiscus boiling in our simple syrup and our heat scalding on the stove and you know our half and half is almost ready when you have little bubbles starting to form around the sides of your pan which means that we can start to melt our gelatin. And you know our gelatin is bloomed is when it's in a form of a thick mass. And what we want to do is we want to melt this in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds. So I have taken my hot half and half mixture off the stove. And what I want to do is add my gelatin mixture, which I have melted in the microwave. And you don't want to add the gelatin over the stove because you could risk the chance of your gelatin overheating. And that now I have incorporated everything, all I want to do lastly is to strain this hot mixture through a sieve into a large portable container and then divide it between all my pans. So the reason we strain is to get all the cardamom back out of the half and half because it doesn't give the panna cotta a good texture. So our hibiscus leaves and our simple sugar has been boiling for about 10 minutes now and you know it's ready to go when the sugar seems to be boiling very thick and not thin because all the water has evaporated. And what we can do now is in a heat proof bowl with a strainer, we're going to strain our hibiscus leaves out of our simple syrup, syrup. and then we're going to place these on parchment paper to dry so they won't stick together. So it's been about three hours and the panna cotta is completely set up and now it's time to just put the finishing garnishes on before we can eat it. And I made the caramel by basically taking the hibiscus syrup and boiling it down to a thick caramel and putting it on parchment paper and it hardens up. So now what we can do to assemble it is add orange segments. I'm just going to place two parts orange segments right on top. I'm going to put a couple candied hibiscus leaves. And then to finish it off, I'm just going to stick a shard of the hibiscus caramel right in it. And then we're complete. So here's an up close view of the panna cotta, which is a classic dessert, and I put my own little twist on it.